Hey, uh, you know, owning these full-size Jeeps, these older vehicles, there's always something going on, something that you need to look at or fix. Well, you know, they're 40 years old, so, you know, I'm 50, 55, and there's always something that's not working right or needs fixed. But anyway, uh, the inside latch mechanism for the doors, the handle wouldn't return when I open the door from the inside and then when I would go to close it from the outside because the handle didn't return it wouldn't latch correctly and uh, so now I finally got into it started looking at it pulled it apart found that uh, the springs and stuff are broken in it so I'm trying to find a source of all that inf uh, information and materials also while I was at it I found um, two older style door uh, armrest that I would rather use however they're a different color so they're gonna have to be painted and I figured before I paint them I need to refurbish them so let's take a look at that real quick okay these are the older style uh, door handles I like these better and I imagine Jeep went to the uh, the newer styles because they were cheaper to make but uh, these are two pieces if you look at the two pieces here they, and uh, they're retained by spring nuts that of course are rusted out and you end up breaking them taking them off so I'll you can get spring nuts on uh, the internet so I'll find some spring nuts that are basically that diameter but what we got is we got the base plate which is cracking all around here that's common they crack and fall apart it's already cracked here which is more of a just a display finish piece but what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to fiberglass these in uh, with these pieces here and sand them down and then I'm going to create a, a metal or plastic base plate to put in here and I'm going to epoxy that all together to make it stronger uh, then uh, we'll take and bleach this down real good, get it nice and clean, get it set up and put some uh, black dye on it. This is how it looks before it comes apart. You can see the push nuts here. This whole assembly pushes out and it's basically a two-piece section. And these are pretty cool. Uh, if you see this here, this has got a hole in it. I am going to, um, I've used it in the past on dashboards. 3M makes a flexible sandable epoxy and that's what I'm going to put in there for that. Uh, the texturing it is kind of uh, going to be hard to do because you got a fake seam here and stuff but uh, it'll be on the bottom so it shouldn't be too noticeable. I'll texture it in the best that I can but it, yeah, it should look pretty nice. But looking at the mechanism, the door mechanisms, uh, this is the mechanism that the handle goes on to and then the rod goes across to the latch uh, that's in the door. There's the latch there. Uh, there is a large spring in here and it's broken. I imagine that it's broken on the very center of the circle and uh, because I can't find the other end of it the end right here uh, catches on the edge however it's not catching on the center piece so I looked on the internet I can't find any assemblies to replace this so I'm going to I sent out uh, a text and a, uh, a topic to the uh, guys on the forum full-size Jeep forum uh, or uh, full-size Jeep net those are a bunch of great guys uh, if there's any way that these are repairable or if there's new parts these guys will know and so basically I am going to go through the process of taking this apart and see what kind of spring is in there so that if I have to try to hunt down a circle spring I can do it so uh, stand by and watch while we do this Just as suspected, I pulled this uh, crimp plate off. It's easy to get to. Very simple, very simple setup in here. But uh, 
Okay, very simple setup, but it's broken. This piece sits inside there. This piece kicks out to the bracket. Two separate pieces, it's not gonna work. So, like I said, I got the guys on the full-size Jeep network, bunch of great guys. These guys are super smart, and uh, a lot of them have been doing this for 30 years and have uh, experienced everything imaginable, so hopefully they'll be able to point me in the right direction. But kind of uh, stuck right now on what I'm going to do next. Also, the uh, you can see it just a little bit right there. The lock spring, the lock return spring is, is broke. You can get those at BJ's, but that's not going to help me too much. Uh, but maybe, just maybe, if uh, if I can't get a new one, somebody on the forum will have a an old one that I can put in. All right, hey, stay tuned. Rocky's rant. Hopefully, if I can think of a topic, talk to you later. Bye. Well, I didn't feel like uh, waiting for another spring, so I took the broken spring, bent a clip into it, or an angle into it, to insert it in there. Uh, hopefully it's not too tight, that it uh, won't operate. But I'm gonna try it like that, I'm gonna assemble it back together, see if uh, this thing will last long enough for me to get new parts in. Today the, um, the epoxy came in and this is uh, a 3M product I mean the stuff that uh, these people are doing not just 3M but the stuff that they're doing with plastic nowadays is just amazing I mean they've got plastics that mimic steel uh, as strong as steel if not stronger you know they got panel bond all kinds of stuff but this stuff here is, is a plastic adhesive slash filler and it's sandable within um, basically 20 minutes so we're going to use this to fill the rat holes and then we'll sand it down try to blend it in the best that we can and then we'll add uh, we'll paint it after that but we're going to use that I also got some push nuts so that we can uh, basically run the push nuts over over these uh, once we get them uh, back together to where we can reassemble them and like I mentioned before, I'm gonna go get some, uh, I don't have any fiberglass epoxy, so I'm gonna have to go to the store to get some. But uh, we'll fix these best that we can. This is actually hidden, majority of it's hidden. So we'll, it doesn't have to look great. And then I'm gonna cut out a, uh, a piece of uh, flat plate, or basically some sheet metal to add support to this and then fill it in so that uh, that it doesn't bow and crack like they often do and if you look this is one's older than the other this one has all kinds of nice uh, reinforcements to it so we won't have to do this one it's got the ribbing this one didn't have the ribbing and you can see it's cracking all the way around so let me get busy on that and I'll show you the process Well, we made some progress. Uh, I basically got the, the first uh, area sanded down. Uh, this was the one with the single hole in it. Uh, I need to add a little bit more material, so I'm not gonna fully sand it down yet. Uh, this one here had the three areas in it, and I need to build up a little more material in uh, this area here. There's a big hole there, and then uh, this one had a smaller hole. I got to build up a little bit more material, and obviously you're going to want to uh, get where there's no hole. You want to get basically that down to back to the original material because it will show up when you paint it if you don't get it off of it. So I'm going to add a little bit more material. I also put this plate together, and that's going to go in here doesn't have to fit exactly but uh, that's 
kind of go in there to support that. And we'll use adhesive to put that in. And I also got the uh, fiberglass resin. And we'll start working on the uh, patching that those broken pieces together. Stay tuned. One step further ahead, this is uh, after all the fiberglass work to get it all back together. This one's got the plate on it. So, got them cleaned up, sanded. Going to uh, start painting them. Basically, this is the other one. Looks good, it's coming along. There we go. Got two of them done. I've got uh, an extra one that I didn't paint. This was the one that had the uh, the three holes in it. I didn't paint that one because I was afraid it was going to run out of paint. But that's what we got so far. Looks pretty good. I mean, uh, you can see right here. If you look real close, you know the texture is not the same where the hole was. I just wanted to let you know that uh, you know you're gonna kind of gonna kind of you can expect that because it's not gonna be the same texture as uh, you know the leather the fake leather texture that was on there. So it's, it looks a little smooth there. It doesn't really go into it doesn't have the fake sewing, but uh, you, you'd actually have to be looking pretty close to try to find that. But the other one looks real good because. It didn't have any holes. So I'll let the paint dry and we'll mount them up in uh, the shop truck. Well, we got it all done. Camera ran out of battery. But if you look, take a look at there. I think it came out pretty nice. Uh, this is the one that didn't have the hole in it. I got that all together. This has all been replaced, repaired inside there. And this one here is the one that that had the hole right there but uh, basically it looks pretty good and uh, you know we'll see how the uh, how the die wears you know with uh, constant use but uh, this shop trucks finally coming along it's coming along little by little it's got air conditioning you know that's very important in Florida uh, it's running better gonna be uh, possibly putting a uh, high stall torque converter in it uh, some people you know it's basically a tow vehicle shop truck and most people on the internet recommend going away from a high stall I'm gonna go to a 2000 and uh, because basically once I hit 40 miles an hour anywhere in town I'm at 2000 numbers up the horsepower and uh, so normally I manually shift it anyway to keep the revs up so with the high stall converter I should be able to do that while I'm towing I do have a, an auxiliary an auxiliary uh, radiator cooler uh, I do not run it through the uh, through the engine radiator as I think that's always been a bad idea you don't want to introduce 200 degree engine temp into your transmission. Transmissions like to run around 160, 150, and uh, so I know that without the without running it through the engine radiator, that the transmissions are happy right around 160, 180. And on these full size Jeeps, when I put the when I bypass the engine radiator and go just to an auxiliary, even while towing it never creeps up on 200 and the worst case scenario when I'm backing pulling forward backing pulling forward trying to get the, the trailer into position 
I've only seen it creep up to 200, 220. While in the past, I've seen these things go 240, 250 when towing. So it's definitely, definitely a good idea to go around the engine heat and have a transmission uh, cooler of its own. All right, so that's one of the things that will be in a future project. Hang in there. We'll see these things get knocked out. I also got my uh, long spring springs in, the retrofit springs. Let's take a quick look at those. Unfortunately, they're about two inches not tall enough. I mean, it, uh, with, the, with the front shackle reversal, the slider box and the new springs, I'm at about three inches of lift. I want to be at five inches of lift. So I'm going to have to call the manufacturer and see what we can work out. But uh, that's with the new springs in. It rides great. And uh, lots, of, lots of suspension travel, lots of droop. Um, but like I said, it didn't meet the bill. Uh, I specifically asked them for three inches on the spring, and I basically got one. So stay tuned. Thanks. Bye.